Threat to Survival is definitely a record about life and death. Um, so the writing process was quite intense uh, from a lyrical side of uh, the spectrum uh, because there's 11 songs on the record and you're listening to 11 scenarios. We're not a band who can put out the same record. I understand that there's bands that do that, that go, this is our sound and this is what we sound like. Okay, we're shined down because of Brent. We're shined down because of me. We're shined down because of Eric. We're shined down because of Barry. But we, we can't, in good conscience, do something to where we make the same record over and over and over again because there are people in this economy who save up money to buy a record and save up money to buy concert tickets and we can't just give them the same record it's just it would be very unbecoming of us to to treat fans like that like they're like they're stupid and go well here's the same thing as sound of madness which after sound of madness it being so successful especially in the states i was scared to death of amaryllis i, I wanted to go in and make sound of madness over again because i was like well, yeah, this is what we have to do and then we ended up making Amaryllis, which I believe is one of the most beautiful things we've ever done. To where Amaryllis was a record about life and being alive and all these beautiful things, this is a darker record and it's, um, it is about surviving. It's about the fact that the sun's not always out every day. It's about the fact that you're gonna have days that you don't want to happen that are out of your control, but they're gonna happen. You're gonna have bad days and it's about how to overcome those. So I think that's where Threat to Survival came from. I dealt with addiction for a very, very long time. I will also continue to deal with addiction until the day I'm no longer on this earth because it's not something that you can just say, oh, I'm free from it now. Uh, I never went into a rehab uh, facility. I never used a 12-step program. Um, by no means whatsoever am I being disrespectful to, to any of those things that certain people would need to do in order to maintain a healthy life. It was just not something that I felt like uh, that I was going to be able to do because I had to do it on my own. I, uh, I just tell people that I'm, I'm sober today, uh, I'm clean today, I don't know what I'll do tomorrow, but that's kind of how, how I have to live. I, I literally live in the moment. Um, I can't really think about tomorrow. Um, I have to live day by day, and that's just something for me that that I've found, you know, um, works for my personality. I feel like subject matter wise, it's the record that I envisioned coming off of Amaryllis. Musical wise, no. I, I thought it was going to go in a different direction, and, and what we ended up doing was making a really cool musical record with lots of air and lots of room for instruments to... I think Sound of Madison and Amarillo were very packed with instrumentation and there was strings and there was you know, 25, 30 guitar tracks on every song. And this one we left way more room and way more air and I thought that was a really cool thing and something that we wanted to do, but I didn't picture it musically coming out that way, the way that it came out. But lyrically and subject matter wise, I knew it was going to be a darker record than Amarillo's. I did every day what is called staring down the beast. It's something that me and the band talk about, and that is when you have a white piece of notebook paper in front of you with a full journal that has nothing written in it that's staring down the beast. Coming into this album, it was, everything was a, was a blank canvas. Um, but uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful record, but it's also a very devastating record uh, in the same breath.